Welcome back to the Transporter Tesla Merge Build. And on the, on the last episode, what you saw us do was cut the roof off the car and remove a load of the riveted bonded panels from the vehicle. Now, today what I want to do is go a little bit further and look at how we're going to strengthen this only on the rear because we noticed that maybe we need to get a brace across this. So I've bought in the 3D scanner. We're gonna clean up this area. We're gonna scan all through here. So we've got mountain points at the top and mountain points down here. We'll then CAD up some plates for the top, the sides, and we'll build a K brace to go in here. We also want to tackle some of the bits, a little bit of tidying up. So we've left bits here where we got so excited cutting the body off that we forgot that we really need to clean these areas back. We also have a new set of brakes from EBC all round for the car. So we're gonna fit those today so that once we've scanned this, we can move it out of the way. And in theory, it's just sat waiting for us to cut the bottom off the van and start trying to make things fit together. Enough of the talking, let's get to the working. In preparation to scan these surfaces, I'm pulling off all of the sound deadening here. And it's not because sound deadening is a problem. The problem is because it's highly reflective, it can play tricks with the scanner and it won't pick up the surface properly. There is one really cool feature on the Revo point, which is it has feature tracking, which means you don't necessarily need to put dots over everything. If the surface you're scanning has enough features, I think it's five features per frame, it will use these as tracking points to complete the scan. So fingers crossed with a bit of luck, we're not gonna to need to cover it in dots. So I'm about to make a cut onto this turret here. I think the idea behind it in my head is that I'm gonna follow the low ridge down the bottom in here for the inbound side, because obviously I want to have the brace there. And when I get to this ridge, I'm just gonna lift it so it's at the height of the bolts. So it's gonna cut sort of across here and then we'll try and tidy it up. I'm gonna do this one first and I'll know what I'm gonna be doing for this one. That's the idea anyway. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Take two. That'll sort of do it. I've cut this one, this one here, look, and I sort of copied it on this one to the best of my abilities, but there was no stenciling involved. Now I've got a flappy disc on here and I'm just gonna clean off these points here because I wanna put a flat plate over the top of here and I'll neaten up the edges. I'll do the same on this side and then we should be in a really good position then to get a clean scan of it so we can drop the scan into CAD and we can look at making the plates for here. And also I've scribbled around the holes here that actually have threads in and taken pictures. So on the scan, I'll know which holes are threaded I could have put studs in them, but I don't have any studs to put in there for the scan to pick up. So we'll work with what we got. We'll make the plates and then we'll make a brace for here. Lovely. So now I've cleaned both of these up. They're not perfect, but they're cleaner. So now you can see that we've got a clear path here. So if we put a plate here and a plate here, we can get our brace across here. So. I'm gonna to get to scanning this. I have not taken this shiny bit off yet because it's really hard to get off. So I'm just gonna see how the scanner picks up because I don't actually need this piece here. I need this piece here because there's threaded holes and I need this piece here. So as long as it gets the measurement right between here, if I follow this edge, then all's gonna be okay. Now we're ready to start scanning because I've cleaned all this area up. This is a Revo point scanner. It literally comes out of the bag like this. Um, you need no computer to use it. It does everything on it itself. You can even flip the screen if you want to scan yourself. Pretty cool, huh? So this doesn't even use flashing lights. So I'm totally unsure on how it works. All I know is that from testing it earlier on this week, it's actually really impressive the data it picks up. And compared to more expensive scanners, there doesn't seem to be anything that it's missing. So we're gonna use that for this, this small amount here. When we go to scan the whole car, we will bring the bigger scanner just because it's quite a big area. And I don't know what the capabilities of this are, it's storage size and how big a scan it will manage. So we'll use it for the small scan and then we'll show you what we've got from it. So as mentioned earlier, this scanner doesn't just need, it doesn't need dots. 
it will do feature tracking. So at the moment it's tracking over holes, bolts, any feature within the scan that it can reference as a point that it's seen before. I'm not very good at talking and scanning because I'm trying to concentrate. I don't want to bugger it up and have to do it again. See how it's twisted the frames there? It's lost its tracking, so I can just press back here. Okay, there we go. And then we can go back to scan. And it finds itself again, and off we go. So I've completed the scan here. I've actually done it twice in case I've missed something on one. So I've also done a more simple version, just concentrating on the areas that I need and not picking up so much between. I've just on the screen here, pressed the one tap edit button, which takes the raw data and then changes it to a mesh model. And on here now you can see what is picked up from the scan. So on the top here, we've got 1.2.3 points. So it's actually picked up enough on that side. And over here, it's actually picked up even better. One, two, three points. And we'll have a look and see what it's picked up down here. And you can see here, it's picked up the holes here for us to, to fasten down the bottom. Always the fear of scanning is that sometimes they'll overlap. You might end up with a slightly skewed model because it will slightly lose its reference point and it will overlap. You can clear that, which is what the editing does. It tidies it up. It will remove anything that's not joined to the main body by a percentage of the body size. Um, so that's done. So I think in the scans now, I've got enough between the two to pick the best one and then we can model that. So we'll have to get this loaded to the laptop to do that. And then we can look at cadding up the brackets that we need for here. And then we'll do the tube work in place. As EBC have sponsored us this lovely set of brakes for the Tesla, I thought we'd better turn our attention before we fit them to see if we can clean up the calipers a little bit. Tesla are nice enough on their performance models to paint them a lovely red, but as you can see, they're a bit dirty. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna spray some iron removing uh, spray on there from G-Technic. This should get rid of all the iron and all the brake dust buildup that's on them. And hopefully they're gonna look a nice cherry red again, ready to race. All the little bits in all the hard to reach areas. And then I'll swill it off with some water and give it a wipe over with a microfiber cloth. Look at that. I can't wipe your ass with one piece of toilet roll. It's never going to happen. Don't matter how many times I fold it. <laughs> here we are now. We're going to start with the brakes on the Tesla. We're going to start here at the front. We've got some lovely discs and pads there from EBC, which look very nice and shiny, up to this old rubbish that is on here, which do not look very good. First thing I'm going to start with is removing this one here that locates the disc just in case I needed to wedge something in it to stop the disc from turning, but actually I think this is gonna come out okay. Well, it's either gonna come out okay or it's gonna break off. It's got a lot of resistance or it's just slowly breaking. Well, that looked more difficult than it was, didn't it? And now what I need to do is, the pads are retained in here but with some pins. So we need to punch the pins out from the front to the back. And it's really odd because there's no clips or bolts or anything that hold these pins apart from this little spring plate here. So there's a little bit of hopes and dreams holding this together. Got the punch stuck. There we go. There's the spring plate. It's one pin. Two pins. Now we need to try and get the pads out. Which means I need to use this. Just. I wouldn't advise doing it this way if you want to reuse your pads, but I'm not. So I'm not doing it any special way. I'm just trying to push the pistons back enough to release the pads off the disc. 
One pad. So the disc was held on by all this corrosion. <laughs> wow, they're bad. All this corrosion here it was holding the disc over the back of the drive flange. So it was difficult to get off, but look at the state of that. Luckily we have some nice new ones. Now, if you need parts to repair an EV, check out evbreakers.com. They stock all different parts for all different makes and models of EV as they're taking them apart every single day. They've also got a massive knowledge base of how you replace and repair those parts. They have a YouTube channel, so go and check out EV Breakers. And I'm talking about them because they are actually our main sponsor for this build series. They have supplied me this Tesla Model S, well, obviously, as you know, what used to be a Tesla Model S performance. So this wouldn't be possible without them. Just putting a bit of copper grease on here, just so when we fit the new disc, if it's on there for a while, it won't bind to the drive flange and then not be able to get it off again in the future should we need to change the brakes again. By the looks of it, they don't think they go through brakes very fast because that disc has got to be changed because the state of the disc, not because the state of the pads. The pads actually still have plenty of meat left on them but the discs have rotten out because on EVs, we don't actually use the brakes very much because we have regen, which the motors do a lot of the braking and slow the vehicle down. So the brakes are just there as an extra. So I've left the caliper bolt slightly loose. The reason for this is when I'm trying to put the pads in, because they're four pot calipers, if they're not completely pushed back, they'll just keep pushing the pistons side to side. With this little bit of play here, it's just gonna give me a bit more room to get the pads in. And then I'll tighten them up once the pads are in place because the pads will push the pistons back evenly. There's probably a tool to do this perfectly, but I don't have it. So this is how I'm doing it. Goes in that way around. <laughs> that way? That way. <laughs> One pad in. Yep, so the springs are not back in now. Sorry, not the springs, the pins. The spring clip is nicely in there and against them. So that's what's gonna hold that in place. I'm only assuming these little bits here are to stop any squeaking and silencing from the brakes. Being an EV, you're really gonna hear any brake noise if you get it. That's the only thing I can assume those are for. So now I'm gonna tighten up these ones at the back. The torque spec for these is FT, if you know what that means. Ta-da! The rear ones are almost exactly the same process. The only difference would be that you usually have a handbrake caliper here. We've removed that because at the moment we can't power up the vehicle. We won't be able to release the handbrake to push it in and out. So we've just taken that caliper off which is all you'd do if you were changing this, you'd unbolt and remove the handbrake caliper first. Apart from that, exactly the same as the front. The scan we took of the Tesla is now into Fusion 360, and it's not very easy to move without a proper mouse, but you can see the mesh here, made up of loads of little triangles. This is the scan. On top of that scan, I've had to put some planes. So I've added a plane where we want the bolts on the lower section, and some planes on where the top mounts are gonna be. You can see them up here. And on top of those planes then I created sketches. And from the sketches we've then created the plate we want to cut, which is now a separate model here. So what we're gonna do now is create a flat pattern from this so we can save the DXF. And then we're gonna get them cut on the plasma cutter just over here. <laughs> So what I've just done, I have used the, is it Swift Cam tool here? And what that's done is I've put the DXF into there that we've created from Fusion. That has created a G code, which the G code is what the CNC machine here needs to use to know all its points of reference where it's cutting. So I've fired up the machine, turned the air on, turned it on. I've referenced the machine, so now it's zeroed itself over there. It knows all its boundaries. So the G-code's now in, I've zeroed the X and Y, it will self-zero its, what's the other axis? It's Z-axis. Uh, so we literally are just gonna press run G-code and off it goes.
Now we have our plates cut here and I've roughly cleaned them up just so there's no sharp edges. They've obviously been designed in the CAD. Now what we've done, we've selected our tube, which is here. And because we need to fit it into Chris's overly small car, we need to try and figure out what sort of lengths we need it to be cut in. So because we have the scan in here, we can go by the size of the tube that I made and place it in the CAD, which is 1.3 meters. So we can cut a length at 1.3. And what I can also do, I can try my best, is to do a sketch here and I can measure where we need to go for each of these. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna measure that and we'll get the pipes cut to rough lengths so that we can transport them back to the hazelnuts unit. We're now at the point that we are bracing the, the Model S Obviously you've seen us me cut up the plates, you've seen the plates be cut. We've now cut the tube to length, cut some bits out sort of lay over the top to try and make it look a bit neater. And now I'm at the point that I'm gonna get it welded up. So, wish me luck. Oh, with my lovely mask from the middle of the little that dad gave me. Which doesn't bloody work. So now I'm gonna have to go and get myself a better welding mask because all I can see right now is stars. And if you've ever had Arkai, you will never want it again in your life. I think we're gonna end the episode there with where we are with this. It is roughly tacked with the old shut the eyes before you weld. And on the next episode, we're gonna finish this up by getting the braces in across here because I need to redesign these panels slightly. The holes were slightly off. So I think we're gonna go for the three middle mountain holes now, take these plates smaller and then we'll put our brace to here. We're also gonna have to cut a mighty great big hole in the bottom of the T5 because we slimmed the Model S down, but the T5 needs a big hole in it so we can start trying to look at how we're gonna mount that. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe and follow because we also post up shorts in the meantime as well, which sort of keep track of the build in smaller chunks. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.